missing us. Here we are today to do some breathing exercises. Um, I would recommend this, it's a short routine, but I'd recommend it each time before you practice. Um, if we think for a moment about a wind instrument, brass or a woodwind instrument, it makes sense that there's no sound gonna come out without air going through the instrument. And of course it's the same for us, there's no sound gonna come out unless we've got some air going through our voice. And so that stands to reason, I hope, that the better quality that air can be, the better the sound will be. Okay, so we're going to start our practice routine with a few breathing exercises. The first one is to wake up these muscles here. Um, I've heard them called transverse abdominals before. I'm not sure if that's the right name or not, but we'll call them that for now. And we're going to get our thumbs here. We're going to put them in our side here. You want to be in your middle. If you can feel a bone underneath your thumbs, you're in the wrong place. You're either too high and you can feel your rib cage, or you're too low and you can feel your hips. You want them right in the middle there. And the first thing then, we're just going to clear our throat. Just, <coughs> just a little cough there in your throat there. And that should flick those muscles for you, okay? <coughs> and you should feel those muscles going harder and softer underneath your thumbs. And uh, you may well see, in, as you look at my elbows, <coughs> um, I'm not doing that on purpose. It's a knock-on effect from these muscles here. Once we uh, hopefully have woken them up like that, we are going to do uh, some tss, tss, tss sounds, okay? Just uh, hisses like that. And each time you make a noise, uh, hopefully those muscles are going to flick on. Let's do this one more. And again. Okay. Now we're going to make the last sound longer. Okay, now this is harder. When we do the long sound, we need to activate those muscles and we need to keep them switched on all through um, our sound. Okay, so this takes more work, more energy. Here we go. Another great thing to do uh, there is to partner up with somebody and to take it in turns to stand one behind the other and to use your partner's hands here instead of your own. And it just seems um, to help to notice what's going on if you've got somebody else's hands there, both when you are the one doing the breathing, um, if you've got somebody else's hands there, it seems to help to feel the internals of what's happening and when you are feeling somebody else do it, it seems to help to notice that, that switch on of the muscles. So I do recommend that as well. Next exercise for us, same sort of thing. We're gonna do hands over head and we're gonna do this, exactly the same sounds. So the idea here is that uh, because our, our hands are high, our rib cage is lifted up and we don't get to move it that much. So we're forced to, uh, to breathe lower down. Here we are. Last time. And then last of all, here we're going to take just some deep breaths. In singing we take deep breaths, not big breaths. Big breaths are what you see people do if you ask them to take a big breath. They go, <gasps> and you see lots of movement. You'll see them go from a slouch position to lifting their chest up, thrusting their shoulders back, and, uh, and they, they'll take very little breath, but it will be very high up. When we take a deep breath, we want to already be standing in a good posture. We want to hold ourselves well. Shoulders are gonna be uh, relaxed, not uh, high, not particularly low, not certainly not scrunched up, but just relaxed and back and, and up. Our rib cage is gonna be held high, and the breathing is going to take place here. It's going to take longer to do. And we're going to take a deep breath and we're going to do a, a kettle for 10 seconds. Uh, maybe that'll be eight beats. Here we are.
last one. Okay, so there'll be another video in this, in this series. I hope you join us for that. See you soon. Bye-bye.